let's investigate the various SSA scenarios described in TR-30. I'm going to choose the given angle that can yield a 345 triangle. The angle is arctan 3 over 4, which is 36.87 degrees. If you don't know why, see TR-24. I chose this familiar triangle so we can have some intuition for what to expect before we solve. For example, if the swiveling side were exactly 3, it would just barely reach the third side to form a right angle. So if it's 2.5, we'd expect it to be too short. Let's see what happens with 2.5. We we'll use the law of sines to find the angle opposite the other given side, the top angle here, which we can temporarily call theta. When we use the law of sines, we know three numbers and we have one variable to solve for. It's often simplest to put the unknown variable in the numerator of the first fraction, like this. So to isolate the unknown variable, we simply multiply the right fraction by the denominator of the left. It lets you solve in one step. Over the next few minutes, we'll be taking the sine of 36.87 degrees, our given angle, a lot. It'll speed things up to know that it's 0.6. I'm focusing on the solution method and not the algebra, so I'll just say that we end up with sine theta equals 1.2, which should sound alarming. Theta equals arc sine 1.2, which is undefined. There's no angle whose sine is 1.2. Sine is always between negative 1 and 1. So an SSA triangle has no solutions when we apply the law of sines to the given measures and get an undefined result for the first angle. Now let's let the length of the swiveling side be 3. This should be our right triangle solution, but let's see what the law of sines tells us. Sine theta over 5 equals sine 36.87 over 3. We end up with sine theta equals 1. As you can hopefully see in your head, sine is 1 at 90 degrees, so theta is indeed 90 degrees. When applying the law of sines to the given measures, getting a right angle describes the case where the swivel side just barely reaches the third side, so there's only one solution. To finish solving this triangle, we'd find the third angle and then apply the law of sines to find the length of its opposite side. I'll show the answers if you'd like to follow along for the practice. So far, so good. When we use the law of sines and get an undefined answer, there's no solution. When we get an angle of 90 degrees, we found a unique right angle solution. Now let's increase the length of the side opposite the given angle to 3.5. Sine theta over 5 equals sine 36.87 degrees over 3.5. We end up with sine theta equals 0.8571. Arc sine 0 0.8571 equals 59.00 degrees. Now we can find the angle at the swivel by subtracting the other two angles from 180 degrees. We get 84.13 degrees. Then one more application of the law of sines to get the third side length, 5.8, and our triangle is solved. Well, we're expecting two solutions, but we've only found one. Let's go back to the very first step to solving this triangle, which will be the law of sines, since we have an angle side opposite pair. The arc sine function returns an angle in the red range from negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees. Its range is constrained to meet the criteria of a function. See TR-23 for a review. But let's look closely at this unit circle and see if there might be another angle whose sine is 0.8571. Yes, this obtuse angle in quadrant 2 also has a sine of 0 0.8571. We can find its measure by using symmetry about the y-axis. The first angle is 59 degrees forward from the zero angle, so this angle is 59 degrees back from 180 degrees, so 121.00 degrees. That's the second answer for theta. Draw a new triangle, it doesn't need perfect scale, with theta equals 121.00 degrees. Now, to find the last angle, the swivel angle, subtract the two known angles from 180 degrees. We get 22.13 degrees, and apply the law of sines again to find the length of the third side, which is 2.2. Here's our first solution, and here's our second solution. The given side-side angle measurements are the same between the two triangles. The difference is 
When we found the first angle using the law of sines, we used the acute angle that the arc sine function gave us. Then we found the last angle using the sum of angles, and we found the last side with the law of sines again. When we found the second solution's angle, we used the obtuse angle in quadrant two. Then, of course, we found the last angle using the sum of angles, and the last side with the law of sines again. The last scenario is when the swivel side is longer than the other given side, the one adjacent to the given angle. Let's say six. If you happen to notice it's longer, then you can stop after you've found one solution, because it will be unique. But if you don't notice, I'll show you how to catch it. The triangle is not the perfect scale. Starting with the law of sines, we find the first angle is 30 degrees. The swivel angle then is 180 degrees, minus 36.87, our given angle, minus 30 degrees, our calculated angle for theta. The result is 113.13 degrees. As always, we have another angle side opposite pair, and we use the law of sines. So we have one solution for this SSA triangle. Let's see if there's another value for angle theta. We know that sine theta equals 0 0.5, and the arc sine function gave us a 30 degree angle. But there's an obtuse angle that also has a sine of 0 0.5. It's 150 degrees. So let's draw a new triangle, not the scale, and let theta equal 150 degrees. Again, we find the third angle, the swivel angle, by subtracting from 180 degrees. 180 degrees minus 36.87 minus 150 degrees equals a negative angle. Now, there's nothing wrong with a negative angle, but not inside a triangle. So this is your clue that there isn't a second solution if you didn't notice that the side opposite the given angle was longer than the side adjacent to it. So there doesn't have to be a complicated series of steps to take or checks to perform. Just apply the law of sines and sum of angles. If the law of sines yields an undefined angle, the triangle has no solution. If the law of sines yields a right angle the first time, there's one solution, a right triangle. Use the sum of angles to find the last angle and the law of sines again to find the last side of the right triangle. Otherwise, the law of sines will yield an acute angle. Finish solving that triangle by using the sum of angles to find the last angle and the law of sines to find the last side. Then redraw the triangle, not the scale, and find the corresponding obtuse angle having the same sign as theta. Sketch a circle if you like, that's what I do. Use the sum of the angles to find the last angle. If it's negative, stop because the only solution is the one you've already found. If it's positive, there's a second solution. Use the law of sines to find the last side. Solving SSA triangles just involves a few extra steps to see if there are two solutions. In the next video, TR-32 will introduce identities and proofs.